coming. Please be seated for the ceremony. Who gives this woman to be married to this man? Her mother and I do. Precious moments. Welcome, everyone. And uh, if you would silence your cell phones. So good to have you here. I know that Bobby and Holly are thankful for each one of you. They've said that a lot to me. And today is a joyous celebration and a serious covenant ceremony before the Lord. So Bobby and Holly are honored that you all are here that to support and love them. So let us come and worship the Lord as we witness a covenant ceremony of marriage between Bobby and Holly. Would you pray with me? Lord, you're the sovereign one. I acknowledge your authority and rule in our lives. I'm here before you with my friends to ask your blessing on this ceremony and your blessing on Bobby and Holly. Lord, in every step through their life together, I pray you would strengthen them to rely on you and that you would enable them to walk through life in a way that honors you and brings great blessing to them. Amen. Amen. Um, Bobby and Holly asked me to comment briefly on a section of scripture. Uh, you guys are uniting in an exciting relationship. You're both so awesome. Uh, we've gotten to know them. Well, we've known them for a long time. But uh, they asked us to do their pre-marriage counseling, and it was um, just a joy. Uh, they both walk with the Lord so closely. And God intends wonderful things for your relationship. Marriage is his doing. He made it up. And uh, he created marriage between a man and a woman to reflect his image to the world. And you get to do that. He, it's intended to be lifelong. You know that. It's precious. It's satisfying. It's fulfilling, and it's a wonderful relationship. And in Colossians chapter 3, um, God speaks a bit about his way in relationships. And uh, the foundation is a right relationship with Christ. He's the eternal God. He's the one who loves us. He humbled himself and took on flesh to dwell among us, and he came to rescue us and give us eternal life. And you guys all know Bobby. He's special ops, right? <laughs> he conducts special ops missions for the Air Force. But guess what? So God conducted a special ops mission on that night in Bethlehem. Because Jesus came on a special ops mission to rescue us. He came at night. He came in an unsuspected way. And the Creator became the Savior. He lived a life that we could never live, and he died the death that we should so that we could be with him. He loves you guys. And he substituted for us, each one of you, on the cross. We just need to respond to him as Bobby and Holly have done, believe in him as their Savior, and he gives us eternal life in Christ Jesus the Lord. So Bobby and Holly, uh, who you are in Christ is the foundation of your marriage, right? Amen, Amen to that. So don't forget your success in life and marriage is an overflow of your relationship with God. So I think God lays out a great foundation 
So let's hear from the Word of God in Colossians 3, six verses, 12 through 17. I'm going to read the Word of God here. So as those who have been chosen of God, holy and beloved, put on a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another. And if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you. So you also must forgive. And above all of these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you are called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns, and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. God says to imitate Christ's compassionate, forgiving attitude. He says, put on compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. He says to bear with one another and forgive each other. So our loving Father recognizes that we will have some disagreements, right? Everybody in the audience who's married, <laughs> Bobby and Holly, you'll have to bear with one another at times, even though you, mm, I don't know, <laughs> it's going to happen. God says to put on his attitude in the scripture. This requires intentional action, putting on. God says, don't forget to get dressed with Jesus, compassionate, forgiving attitude every day. And I know you both do. That's encouraging. Second, God says, let love reign in your heart. The Bible says there, above all, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. So Bobby and Holly, if you want to keep a close, vibrant, tender, gentle marriage relationship, put on his love in your personal life and let it overflow into your marriage. And a successful, fulfilling marriage is the overflow of your relationship with the Lord. We've talked about the importance of oneness in marriage in our pre-marriage counseling, and this is one of the keys to building and maintaining oneness. Third, the Bible says, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Well, rule is an athletic word that means to act as an umpire, interestingly enough. But it's more than just being an umpire in sports or a ref in soccer or football. It means to let the peace of Christ act as the one having authority to arbitrate and make the final decision in your marriage. As you both allow the peace of Christ to rule in your lives and arbitrate all your discussions, the result will be joy and peace and oneness in your marriage and in your home. Let him be the umpire. Fourth, always be thankful. There's something about being thankful that changes a person's outlook. And when you begin to thank God, even in the toughest circumstances, it changes your focus and changes your heart. So a thankful heart does powerful things in a marriage. So don't forget to be thankful. Fifth, keep God's word in you at all times. The Bible says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. So Bobby and Holly, Make it a priority. I know you do. I appreciate that. Keep making it a priority, I guess I would say, to read the Bible, to meditate on God's Word. It's God's Word that ought to be the foundation for all you think, feel, and do. And without daily focus on God's ways, there's little chance that you'll be able to follow God's blueprint in your marriage. You've got to stay focused on Him. Finally, in everything you do, live as Christ's representative to each other. The Bible says, whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus. So have that attitude that you're Jesus' representative to your spouse. How cool is that? It'll revolutionize the way you relate with each other. You'll have hard days, yeah, when you feel like you need more from, the, from your spouse than you're getting, or you don't feel like they're meeting your needs. And these are the times you need to communicate with each other with the right heart attitude. Tough times are reality, but you can deal with that as you walk closely with the Lord. Make up your minds to bring honor to Jesus, and you have 
in every aspect and activity in your life. So life is too short. And the consequences are too significant uh, to ignore God's ways in your relationship. So Bobby and Holly, by the grace, we don't do, <laughs> I can't do it, you can't do it in our flesh. We trust in the Lord, the Holy Spirit in us. I charge you to pursue these six things. One, imitate Christ's compassionate, forgiving attitude. Let love reign in your life. Let the peace of Christ rule. Be the umpire in your life. Always be thankful. Fifthly, keep God's word in you at all times. And finally, live as Jesus' representative to your spouse. Amen? Amen, Amen to that. So, uh, Bobby and Holly want to express their profound gratitude um, to their parents and grandparents for the constant love and encouragement they've been. These are yellow roses of Texas, right? <laughs> And these roses represent Bobby and Holly's precious love and thanks to their parents and grandparents. Beautiful. We're going to have a time of communion with the bride and groom. But in taking the bread and wine, Bobby and Holly are proclaiming that they and their marriage are set apart to the service of the Lord. And they're doing this in remembrance of all that Jesus has done for them as our substitute on the cross and that he took our sins that we might have life eternal in him. The scripture uh, talks to that in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 says, For I received from the Lord, Paul's writing this, that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of him. We do it in remembrance of him and all that he's done for us. In the same way, he took the cup after supper, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant, my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and proclaim and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And in Colossians, it's, I love this one verse. Uh, in chapter 1, it says, For he, speaking of Christ, he rescued us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son. I thought that we have enough military people in here. The word transfer means a permanent change. And so what happened is that Jesus PCS'd you. <laughs> all right, all you military people. No, serious. You were PCS'd from the domain of darkness to the kingdom of his beloved son. When you PCS, you leave the old commander. He has no sway over you. You have a new commander. You have a new mission. You have new squadron of people that you relate with. That's what eternal life is. God has given us a PCS 
to the kingdom of light, and it, you never go back. He's your commander now, and I think that's really cool. We're going to celebrate that with communion now. This thing tilts. Yes. So, you know, you guys, Jesus loves you crazy. He loves you crazy. He died for you. And he, he lived a life for you. And he rose for you. And he wants, he wants you to remember that and to serve him all your life. So but this is Christ's body broken for you. Christ's body broken for you. Go ahead. He went to the cross. He suffered greatly. Um, people spit on him and called him a devil. And he was the king of kings. And, uh, but he went for the joy set before him. Hebrews 12 says, you are the joy set before him. That's why he went to the cross. <laughs> How crazy is that? He says, keep your eyes fixed on him, Hebrews says. So do this in remembrance of him. Watch, be careful. Yes. Blood of Christ shed for you, Bobby. Blood of Christ shed for you, Holly. Amen. Beautiful. She's going to fix your dress. You guys can hold it. Well, we're going to have some vows here. But before we uh, state your wedding vows before God and one another, I want to encourage you both. In today's culture, people make pledges and promises almost daily, only to abandon them uh, when it it's not so useful or advantageous anymore. And that's the culture. But today, in this wedding ceremony, um, you're making a commitment to each other that's for life. And it's a concept taken from the Old Testament. The vow is a spiritual oath or pledge between God and the person making the vow and between each other. It's a sacred dedication for better or for worse. So, Bobby, repeat after me. You make this vow to Holly. I, Bobby. I, Bobby. In the presence of God and these witnesses. In the presence of God and these witnesses. Take you, Holly, to be my wife. Take you, Holly, to be my wife. To have and to hold from this day forward. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poor in sickness and in health in sickness and in health to love and to cherish until death do us part to love and to cherish until death do us part amen holly repeat after me i holly i holly in the presence of god and these witnesses in the presence of god and these witnesses take you bobby to be my husband take you bobby to be my husband to have and to hold from this day forward. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish until death do us part. To love and to cherish till death do us part. Amen. Wow. <laughs> okay, I'm crying now. <laughs> So we have some rings here today, and this is an example, thank you, and a reminder of this covenant, right, and your marriage vow. So Bobby and Holly will give each other these wing, rings, wings, to, <laughs> you wastily wabbit. 
<laughs> Take this wing, wing. It, uh, uh, yeah, to symbolize their commitment and devotion to each other. So, so Bobby? It's the first time she's seen it. <laughs> so, Bobby, repeat after me. I give you this ring as a symbol. I give you this ring as a symbol. Of the covenant made between us. Of the covenant made between us. And with all that I am and all that I have. And with all that I am and all that I have. I will fulfill the covenant. I will fulfill the covenant. And honor you before God. And honor you before God. Molly. It's okay, you can leave it like that. There you go. Holly, repeat after me. I give you this ring as a symbol. I give you this ring as a symbol. Of the covenant made between us. Of the covenant made between us. And with all that I am and all that I have. And with all that I am and all that I have. I will fulfill the covenant. I will fulfill the covenant. And honor you before God. And honor you before God. Amen. Would you pray with me? God Almighty, we pray that you would enable Bobby and Holly to honor and keep these vows in the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, pour out your love and blessing on this couple. Use them mightily to reflect your image to a broken world. Lord, give them wisdom as they reproduce a godly heritage in their own new family. And Lord, give them great joy in their marriage. Amen. Amen. I think they're taking pictures of that. <laughs> oh, man. And now, by the authority committed unto me as a minister of the gospel, I declare Bobby and Holly are now husband and wife according to the ordinance of God and the law of the state of Colorado in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. As Jesus said, what therefore God has joined together, let no man separate. So receive God's benediction. May the Lord God bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Bobby, you may kiss your bride. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to present to you Mr. and Mrs. Ubalacker. Woo!